What is up, everybody? Welcome back. Joe Everest, the fence expert, and you know what we're doing. Jeremy's gone out and found us another video that I can watch and give you guys your reaction to. The video is titled, So This Is How Americans Install Fencing. Oh, this is DJ Projects. If you've watched this channel at all, you know that I really like their content. I think we're going to enjoy it. Let's get into it. I'm Dave. I'm Steve. I'm Dad. And I'm Son. Welcome to another episode of DJ Projects Wednesday Special. So here we are on the weekly Wednesday video. This is what the fencing one was looking like. Pretty rough shape. And now this is what the fencing is looking like. Now we've started to take this camp rail down and we are literally replacing it with the exact same thing again. But much newer, no rotten boards, because if you have a look here, These boards are all ready. So that's pretty common uh, with rails, with fences, with rails that are installed horizontally. So with the wide face facing up, I guess, rather than vertically with that wide face facing out. The wider portion of that board gives a ton of surface area for water to sit on and seep into. And as we can see here, promote rot. So uh, unfortunately, you still see, you still see guys installing fences uh, with these two by fours hor horizontally, you got to stop doing it for this exact reason. You see a lot more rot a lot faster with two by fours installed horizontally. Start installing those things vertically. And rotten. So that's why we're replacing this fencing. It's me and Taff on the job today. Yeah. And it's running slightly up there. So we've got a slight bit of an angle. You know, I'll say this about Taff. He's in every one of these videos. And this guy is a workhorse. I think we all need a few taps in our lives. Make our companies that much better. To do what there. So I think for the time being, we'll carry on taking this down. <laughs> well, so the camp rain and Feverage are out. And now it's time to get these posts out. Some of them are absolutely solid. And then others, move quite a bit so so this is an interesting post style in other videos that we've done with the actually it was another reaction video of dnj's uh talking about how they install fence in the uk so this came up i believe these are called grandfather posts so the concrete post is only a few feet above the ground and then it is bolted to the wood post provides rigidity and makes them easier to replace uh long term Interesting concept for sure. Like I said, I think they're called grandfather posts. If they're not, go ahead and correct me in the comments below. Always willing to learn a thing or two. We should be able to get a few out, but then I don't think we'll get all of them out. So we might use the technique where we just get the post off and get rid of the concrete below surface. But obviously we'll keep you updated. But first, I'm going to attempt to get the ones out that I've got a wiggle on with the grafter. And uh, hopefully I'll have some luck. So we managed to get one out. One came out very nice. And we've also put our first post onto the wall. And what you can probably hear Taff doing now is digging another hole ready for our post. And then we'll be able to set a string line from there to there. And we'll be able to... So that was something that came up in the last D&J uh, video because what that video was, and we'll link it, up here somewhere the, the biggest thing was that they didn't see a string line right away the viewers did not see dnj using a string line now as i commented several times part the way through the video you can very clearly see there was a string line used i'm glad to see uh stevie letting everyone know right from the get there will be a string line involved in this fencing operation see what we're working with and of course these are coming out of the way so we're just going to get that post set set a string line and then get these out of the way. And then we are pretty much ready to go. Start digging some holes for that camp rail fencing. Now, is this how you do fencing in America, Joe Everest? <laughs> okay, fair enough. I should probably watch these beforehand. I, for I forgot about that call out altogether. So this video was done back in July. Uh, yeah, Stevie, off to a great start. We've got a post in, we've got a string line, 
running all the way down. That's what we like to see. And now it's just a matter of getting these out. So let's get them out. And the posts are gone. There's some big bits of concrete on these. Look at them, absolutely massive. A little bit overkill, but they're out now. And have a look at that. We've got another post in. And another. So these are more tradi traditional or typical of the traditional American uh, style, I guess. With So there's no grandfather posts there. It's just a, uh, a straight, looks like a four by four post uh, headed straight into the ground. Looks like may probably a uh, pressure treated pine, just judging by looks alone. Another post following off the string line nicely, getting the first camp rail to the top, and the fev edge will slightly go just above that, only two inches at most. And we need a camp rail in the middle, a camp rail on the bottom, and a 6B1 timber for the kickboard. Okay, so it sounds like a pretty typical. American fence, um, so six foot tall, uh, can't rails, we would call them two before's, but it sounds like they're using three of them, off to a great start, uh, and also they're using a kickboard, so here in the Midwest, we don't see kickboards used a lot, This it's kind of a southern thing, it seems like, um, a lot of kickboards used in Texas specifically, so uh, yeah, off, Stevie, again, off to a great start here. It's coming on though, this is all of the old fencing as well. As you can see, it was ready for a replacement. But, uh, but me and Taff are just gonna go have something to eat now, have a bit of a break, and then we'll catch up when we're back. So we're back from lunch. So let's get another post in right there. All right, I tried the snapping fingers. Doesn't work here in the States. I hate to break it to you. It seems like in your videos, the snapping fingers thing works. Obviously it made this fence appear. Not a thing here. There's a post. There's the other post, the last post that we did earlier, and a couple camp rails now. So we've got one running down, and then this one here, uh, ever so slight incline, and then these ones are nice and straight. Because as you can see, the garden starts to go up like that. So straight. So one of the benefits of building the fence on side is exactly what Stevie's explaining. You can more closely follow the terrain. Uh, now, you can follow the terrain with pre-built fence panels. We've had this discussion in the comments as well, um, but it's more consistent if you build on site. You can more consistently follow the grade if you build on site. One guy's opinion. Slight incline, bigger incline, seeing as we're dealing with that bank right there. So, what Taft's doing now is just taking the last post because we've already dug a hole just there. We're going to drop that one in for extra support and then we're pretty much just onto the camp rail. So all of the posts are set now, all of these as well. And as you can see, we are just putting the middle rail on right now. So that one is all screwed in and it's nice and level. Not just level there. It's also level there. So that's what we're pretty much going to do all the way up there as well. Taft just brought those 6B1s in. Now nah, as the kickboard, probably thinking, why didn't you come around there and help me? So, <laughs> so we're going to get <laughs> we're going to get that kickboard on here now as well. We've got a camp rail if needed as well. And once we've got that in, we'll show you what it looks like. So here we have the first few sections with all of the posts, the free camp rails and a 6B1 kickboard just behind. Okay, so so it looks like they're running the kickboard on the bottom two before. Um, definitely an interesting way to do it. It would probably make placing your pickets, a little, yeah, I don't know about easier, but it, it would help with placing the pickets. You just place them on the, on the kickboard. So the way I've seen it done, now again, we don't install fences with kickboards, so I could be completely off base here. Uh, but typically, the that bottom kickboard would be a two-by material. So like it, it sounds like they're using uh, six-by-one, which here in the States, we would just flip that. It's a one-by-six, so probably one-inch thick or one-inch nominal. It's usually somewhere of five-eighths or three-quarters. Uh, but that we would install 
we would typically install a, a two by material in line with those two before the top, middle, and bottom two before, uh, just so that the pickets would overlap that kickboard. It's actually a little bit easier to follow terrain that way because the pickets, since the pickets overlap the kickboard, they can be at varying heights that follow the terrain so that the top looks nice and you have a nice snug fit at the bottom. Anyway, so a million ways to uh, skin a potato. What it would look like with the feather edge on. It's a little bit tight down here now as well, especially when the feather edge is on. Bearing in mind, we've got to nail this as well. So this is what it's like from this side with a rail. You grab your feather edge, you put it on your kickboard, like so, and you rest it up against there, and then you nail right. it in. Remember I said it will just be about two inches above the post as well, and there we go. Now this varies contractor to contractor here in the States. At Ozark Fence, we typically do about a six inch reveal. So six inches from the top of the picket down to the top of the top two before, but two inches would give you that much more support above the picket. Looks great. So once that's all on and it's returned all the way down there, I think it's going to look quite nice. Not too shabby indeed. The frame is up. All the way now. Taff just laying a few feather edges out now, ready for tomorrow, I believe, to start nailing them in. I'll just show you from... The neighbor's side as well I'm not sure if you'll be able to see much just because shrubberers and you can't so that was a waste of time but yeah not looking too bad just got the ivy that was growing up the old camp rail need to find out what they want to do with that because it's still attached to the floor i don't know if they still want it as a boundary as a cover for the fencing because i know both neighbors like the shrubberies if not, we'll just get rid, no big deal. So right now, we're pretty much just tidying up. And when we start putting the feather edge on and cladding this fence, we'll let you know. But uh, until then, let's have a minute. So they're using feather edge style pickets, uh, which would be interesting. So those are typically uh, overlapping pickets. Kind of interested to see how that goes. So I've decided I'm going to start cladding for even if it's just 15 20 minutes it's better than nothing it's a little bit too early to go back to the yard now so may as well start cladding so this is what i'm going to do so i'm going to start at the top there i've made myself a little jig and i'll show you how this works you can actually buy tools for this but you don't need to you're bound to have off cuts of your timbers when you're setting up your framing so just make a jig out of it and I'll show you how we use this jig now. So basically, we have two feather edge. Bearing in mind, I'm doing this one-handed. So you put your feather edge on your kickboard. For the purpose of this, I will not level that, but you would level that. <sighs> Splinter. I think Stevie needs uh, one, one or two more hands. One for the oh camera, a couple more for building. <laughs> Can't work out how to use my own jig. <laughs> oh my god, this is hard one I did. <laughs> so that's how the feather edge are going to roughly look, give or take a few mils either way. This is your jig. You put your jig in like this, you turn it, so that's flush now, and then Taff pushes yeah. the feather edge to it. And that's my spacing. That's my space guide now. And then I nail it down. And then once that fair edge is on, you put that in. There's Not a bad idea. That way you get consistent spacing all the way down the fence. This is this overlapping feather edge style. I think it's pretty interesting. I'd like to try it out here locally. And maybe it maybe build a few displays at a local trade show. See if we can get it to catch on here. I like it. So in the traditional privacy style, uh, the pickets would be butted up against each other. But when they dry out, which they're going to do, they will shrink ever so slightly. It could be up to half inch. Typically, it's a quarter inch on cedar pickets. It could be up to half an inch on treated pine. Uh, you're left with a gap, quarter to half inch every single picket. So by instead of 
you know, the traditional privacy with overlapping, now all of a sudden, even if those pickets dry out, you're still not going to get that gap. I'd like to see this catch on more. My space guide, and you work it all the way down. It's as simple as that. So what I'll do, I'll set you up for a time lapse for this little bit here, and we'll see how it looks, eh? So it looked like I'm just running this through in my head the the width or the overlap of those pickets is the width of that two by four. So you're getting about an inch and a half overlap for every picket. Pricing this fence would be pretty similar to pricing, say, a shadow box. So on the shadow box style, we would have pickets on either side of the fence, but they'd each be overlapped roughly an inch and a half. So pricing it would be roughly like a shadow box. Now, there'd be some labor savings because you're only working one side of the fence instead of working two sides. Uh, yeah, I am, I'm really interested in the feather edge style. Maybe we'll call it the UK style. And that is what we call cant rail fencing in the UK. Well... That's what we call camp rail fencing at d &J Projects. Feather edge, lovely timber kickboard for rot prevention. And look at these drops. Every single one of them is absolutely perfect. Me and Taff have spent a little bit of time prepping the ground to make sure that everyone ran like that. A little bit of pride in the work. So it's getting a little bit tighter down here now. As you can see, the conservatories there, all of these shrubberies are here. So what I'll do, I'll put you on a time lapse from over there so you can see it from the opposite side. fence this is it from this angle running all the way down nice and neat and i'll just show you from down there and there it is running all the way down i'll i won't show you the opposite side because we're heading back now and i'm in this garden and i've got to get out going that way so what we'll do we're coming back tomorrow i'll show you the backside tomorrow not looking too shabby though and we are back. It is the next day and it's the clear up day. I will show you all of this backside of camp rail fencing. But first, it's the clear up. We've just borrowed the customer's sledgehammer to absolutely try and destroy <laughs> this bit of concrete that was around this post. And it's still massive and it's still ever, but a bit of concrete off now so we might be able to get it in that barrel. I'm thinking we will. So we'll get this in the barrel, we'll get this round the back and then we'll start taking all of that rubbish around the back as well. Well, around the front, sorry. Get rid of that, and then I'll show you this fencing. So all of the wood is gone now. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to get the spring rake. Just give this a little bit of a tidy. The customer has just said that he likes to keep this a little bit wild anyway. So I'll not go too crazy on this. But this is the fencing from the back side. This is what we call cant rail fencing in the UK. Well, that's what we call it at D&J Projects. Now, our good friend over in America, Joe Everest, is this how the Americans do fencing? Yeah, I, absolutely. So with the exception of the feather edge, I, I haven't seen that here in the States, but I love it. I think this fence turned out so great. I have a feeling that the clients were very pleased with it as well. We call those feather edge boards, and I think you call those pickets. Yep. Or maybe you don't use feather edge and you use something else. So I'll have to look into more of uh, specific, specifically feather edge, the, the term. Yeah, so we would call them pickets. Looks like a standard six-inch wide, six-foot tall picket. We call them one by six sixes, inch thick, 
Now it's always nominal, right? So it's again anywhere between five eighths and three quarters, uh, six inches six inches wide. Uh, that varies anywhere from five and a half to six. Sometimes you'll find true six. More often, more often than not, uh, they'll measure five and a half inches wide and then six foot tall. But in our eyes, this is camp rail fencing. Feverage. I like it a lot. I'll just show you what was here before. What an improvement. And this is what it's looking like now. I will show you the other side as well, sir. I'm just going to clean up the rest of this stuff on this grass and then I'll go next door. And this is the fencing from this side. Quite hard to see from this side, I'm not going to lie, with the shrubberies and half of the fencing is behind a conservatory. I'll just go up there and try and show you from that side. Very nice. And as you can see, it runs all the way down That's there as point. well. And it was a little bit tight <laughs> putting them boards on. Not going to lie. But that is it from us at D&J Projects on this Wednesday afternoon. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If so, smash that like button. Let's aim for 2,000 likes because we very much appreciate it. And it helps the channel out. If you're brand new around here, why not subscribe? And if you've got anything to say, comment wise, just pull it down below and I'll be sure to get back to you. We'll see you in the next one. Well, guys, if you're not following DNJ Projects, you absolutely should be. Uh, they're pretty, they're easy enough to find. You can simply search DNJ Projects. We'll also uh, link this video in the description below. DNJ Projects, job well done. The fence looks great. I'm sure, like I said, the client is very pleased with the work guys let me know in the comments below what you think of the fence i think it turned out great i'm especially impressed by the feather edge style it's something i think that we'll be trying out here in our neck of the woods in our part of the united states let me know what you think about it in the comments below also let me know if you would have done anything a little bit differently we can all learn together but for now i'm joe everest the fence expert reminding you the good fences make good neighbors and i'll see you next time